technical funding requires input from the community. Now, this is an overall effort for the whole school system. In addition to a general gathering of people, we have an individual craft committee for each trade. You, you teach a machine shop, you'll have five machinists that'll meet with the teacher twice a year to have input into what he, he or she is teaching. You have a, a nursing program, you'll have a, five nurses that will meet with the nursing instructor to make sure they're on the ball and up to date with the equipment and curriculum and that type of thing. So you're doing a good job and we want you to know why we call you together twice a year. We meet in April and October, so if you want to just make a mental note of that, you'll get a letter from the school system each April and each October to come in and have a cup of coffee and speak with Dr. Mears and Mr. Sheely, our superintendent. So these type of things are good for the community. Uh, we, we're not proud of our rating this year with uh, a D, but we are proud of many things that are happening. We had five schools that moved up to the B level. Uh, we had 99% of our third graders that passed the state reading exam. And that compares to only 87% of statewide percentage of who passes. So things are not all bleak in Warren County. Things are good that are going on. We're going to ask you just where you can put a name with a face to introduce yourselves and who you represent. Let's start over here with Mr. Campbell, our Assistant Superintendent of Education. David Campbell, Deputy Superintendent. Lucy DeRossi, Director of Innovations, Vicksville Born School District. Tim DeRossi, Career Pathways, Heinz Community College. Uh, I'm Chris Carter, I work with Toxic Foods. Hill the White, retired all point state professor. Leon Collier, uh, chaplain for Tyson Foods. Colonel Green, you want to wait for Right there, right there. Right there. Right there. call it now. We were wondering, sorry. There's some more early folks. Good. Introduce yourselves, please. We're on television. Oh, that's good. <laughs> My name is uh, Tom Isaac, and I'm with phone packaging on Highway 61 South. My name is uh, Gary Anderton. I'm the director of human capital at the Arctic. Let's pick up over here with Mr. Shane. Mark Cheney, Barney. Charlie Amorn, retired. Scott Babinowicz, Vicksburg National Military Park. Scott Thompson. Charlie Peace, unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick up Scott back here. Scott Cox, I'm the director of Louisiana Delta Community College in Toulouse. Where is Scott? Andrea Upchurch, Jones and Upchurch Real Estate. I'm Clark McNair. I'm retired from Hurdy. Uh, Clark grew up in Raymond, Dr. News. He's one of your boys over there. Yeah. Chief? Derek Stamps, Deputy Fire Chief, Vicksburg Fire Department. Mike Smith, established solution. Richard George, District 5, Warren County Board of Supervisors. Um, Oscar Denton, State Representative of the House District 55. Ms. Williams? Danielle Williams, Police Bay Police Department, Crime Prevention. Dr. Fowler? Jack Fowler, uh, retired U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, former Votech student, Car Central High School. 
<laughs> and, and by the way, Dr. Fowler was picked as an outstanding alumnus of Heinz Community College a couple of years ago. So we're glad to have you, Doctor. Mark and Moe, Heinz Community College. I'm going to hold Dr. Muth's introduction for a few minutes, Joe. I'm Joe Liddell. I work out at Hampton Inn and Suites. Benny? I'm Benny Terrell. I'm retired. Benny is on the advisory committee of Heinz Community College. Johnny Pruitt, now retired, but doing other things. <laughs> Johnny's been a supporter for many years. He ran the All-State Agency here for a long time. I'm Tom Kendall with Trustmark National Bank. Tom is the man that helps us get the money together to build buildings. I'm Chad Shady, superintendent of Vicksburg Warren School District. Michael Winters, administrative assistant to superintendent of Vicksburg Warren School District. Dr. Winters is our catch-all man. He, he picks up the loose ends on everything. <laughs> I'm Sandy Hubbard. I'm with Mississippi State University Extension, the Extension agent here in Warren County. Glad to have you. You're new in Warren County. I am. Glad to have you. Thank you. I'm Ed Fletcher, uh, Tyson Foods. Ed is my son-in-law, and he's also a manager at Tyson Foods. Pepper. Yes, I'm Pablo Diaz with the Warren County Port Commission and the Vicksburg Warren County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Rick Tillis, an education outreach coordinator at Erdick. Mike Tedder, uh, complex manager for uh, Vicksburg Plant. Did we get everyone? James, career tech administrator with the Vicksburg One School District. Good morning, I'm Christy Kilroy in communications department at the school district. Joe. Uh, Joe Benelli with Joe Benelli Construction here in Vicksburg. Did I see in the paper you're running for office? I am. What office are you running for? House of Representative, All District right. 54. If you get over there, you send us some money now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jane Dagg, Warren County Circuit Clerk. I apologize for being late. Did we miss anyone? The Durossets. I got her. Oh, okay, my bad. I didn't pay any attention when y'all introduced me. Thank you for coming out this early. Uh, originally, when we set up this advisory group, they asked for early morning to accommodate getting to work by 8 o'clock. So I'm going to do my best to get you out of here by 8 or a couple minutes after. Uh, we have a wonderful community, and I think you'll agree with me. Uh, I'm a seven-generation Warren County person, and I certainly have enjoyed my life in this county. And it's because of people like you that we have a good school system. And, you know, we, we want the best for our children, and we want the best for the community and attracting business and industry to come here. <clears throat> we report to the <coughs> industries and, and the agencies that send us funds for various vocational training programs and we let them know how many people have been involved in the decision making process. And I think that's what you would like to see with how your tax money is spent. Starting off this morning, I'm going to ask our superintendent of education, uh, Mr. Chad Sheely. He's been our superintendent for three years. Excellent man, does his job well, uh, well prepared. Uh, bachelors from Ole Miss don't hold that against him. <laughs> Masters from Mississippi College, on and on, lots of experience. Let's support Chad Sheedy, our superintendent. If I'm going to be out here by eight, I've got to talk fast, so hopefully he can listen fast. Uh, there's several pamphlets that we got, or a couple of pamphlets that we got uh, there for your uh, perusal. A couple of things I would like to uh, make a statement about. Of course, Mr. Joe talked about a rating. Um, in the most rigorous assessment we've ever had, with the least uh, um, support from MDE, with the, with the cut scores moving every year, the assessment getting harder, graduates five years ago were allowed to count GED, and it was a six-year cohort. Uh, excuse me, five-year cohort. We are in the, the, the smallest cohort with the most restrictive uh, requirements we've ever had, yet we've had our highest performance. We, if you look, uh, there's a trend um, in our graduation, there's a trend in our numbers. Uh, we went from about 54% um, went right before I got here um, to we're sitting on top of 70.6. And when you bring children back into the uh, school district that are graduating, that's a big gain for us. Um, you have to go back three superintendents to find a number close to where we are now. Uh, and if you look at our trend in our elementary schools, two years ago we had 1B, now we have 5. We're very proud of the progress that's being made. Our students are achieving at a higher rate than a state in lots of areas. Mr. Joe mentioned our reading gate. We did have a 99%. To put that in perspective for you, 674 students, only 5 were retained. That's huge. When you talk about 88.8% .8 of our students are free and reduced lunch. Let that sink in. 
You find another community that has the amount of poverty that we do, that are making the progress that we do, show them to because it's going to be difficult to find them. Uh, we're very proud of the work that's being done. We have hard work to do. There's no doubt about it. We don't shy away from it. Um, but we're making a difference every single day. And for the third year in a row, we've had an increase in our test scores, which um, doesn't define all that we do because a vast quantity of our folks, uh, when you have a 54% dropout rate, then there's a bunch of kids that don't fall in that category. Because if you didn't graduate in four years, you don't count towards graduation. doesn't matter that we graduated 21-year-old graduates last year who are working in this community now who are enrolled in Heinz Community College, who have partnerships with Alcorn. Uh, those are the things that we're doing despite the amount of points we don't get in the uh, school accreditation. Now, with that being said, no, as a superintendent, I'm fighting for our community to get those results because if we hadn't adjusted a graduation rate, we would look much different. Um, as we move forward in um, the district, a couple of things that I want to point out also uh, Y'all are bottom line folks, especially if you're, you're in industry. Uh, would anybody be uh, excited about a 26.6% increase? How about you, Mayor? Would you be, uh, would you be excited about a 26.6% uh, decrease in crime? I can get down zero. Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. I believe in zero. So when you're talking about decreasing and increasing, those are things that we're doing uh, very well. we got the highest graduation rate since 2009. I'm not going to read all these bullet points to you, uh, but they're there for your perusal, and you can see that uh, we're definitely on the move. Um, the second thing, and I think it's the most important thing to talk about this particular council with, and I got to talk to uh, uh, Mike at um, Mike Tedder. Tedder. Uh, he, he is with uh, Tyson, and I, I told him that we have an industry council. Some of you serve on our Ford NGL council. To put this in... If you were at our convocation, it was the most remarkable event I've ever attended. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. But what we have uh, taken the stance as a school district is um, we're not defining ourselves on the number of A, Bs, Cs, and Ds that are passed out by a bunch of folks that uh, don't have anything to do with our community. We're not defining ourselves by the amount of graduates or even scholarships that we get. We're defining ourselves about the fact that our end game is tied to employment. Because when you talk about what that means, it doesn't matter how many kids you graduate because when you talk about the stats of an IHL or, or a community college, 44% of the kids that attend a community college are gone by the second year with no credential. 63, or excuse me, 36% of the kids that go to the universities are gone with no credential by the second year. So when you talk about the amount of folks, and these are the best of the best that are graduating that are moving on, they're leaving education with no end game. Well, and I like the zero on that. But what, if, what we were able to do is uh, with Heinz Community College, we have an amazing partnership with them. We also have one with Alcorn. Uh, we have the largest employer in our district, which is Erdick. And I'd like to use them as an example of how we've tailored what we're doing to provide employees for Erdick. A couple things. Uh, we're looking at a precipice. We've turned in a presentation. We've got our fingers crossed. For the first time in the history of the school district, we're going to possibly be on Erdick's campus with one of our academies. Uh, now, our academies are defined uh, by our 16 job clusters. There are 16 job clusters that all of you fall in. Either you had a job or you got one. I'd love to be uh, where, where some of our individuals said, I'm, I'm retired and I get to hunt and fish and do what I want to. Um, but, but all of us aren't there yet. And in that context, uh, a successful community needs workers. So what we've done in, with Erdick is we've sat down and said, what do you need? And they worked through multiple levels. Of course, they need engineers. Well, a K-12 system can't give you an engineer, right? However, we have an engineer in junior high. Our engineer in junior high feeds into our architecture, construction, mechatronics, engineering academy. We have an early college high school, one of three in the state, where a kid can get two years of their education free before they move into a four-year institution, meaning I can give you a, 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 a um, college degree individual two years quicker than any other community, especially any you can find close. Uh, and it's at no cost of their own. When you talk about the amount of college courses that are important for us, uh, we serve poverty children. I, I hope you heard that earlier, 88.8%. When we got here, we had about 500 kids that were getting uh, dual credit courses, uh, dual enrolled AP. Uh, we almost have 1,200 now. We've tripled the amount of African-American males that are taking college courses. We've doubled the amount of African-American females that are taking college courses. Overall, we've increased almost 600 students that are now taking college courses. That's transformational, mainly because the majority of those courses don't cost our parents anything. 
That's largely due to the work that uh, uh, Heinz has done with us and Alcorn. We have uh, pilot um, memorandums with both of them. I'll tell you something else we've done. We understand that nationally there's a trend that says you need a bachelor's degree. Only problem with that is you don't. There are people that earn incredible wages with industry credentials and associate's degrees. We have taken a very bold, unique approach. Uh, I think it may be the only in the state at this point, but there's others trying to follow us. Uh, we have taken our dual credit courses, which were high school courses only, and aligned them to the post-secondary credentials. So we have students that are working on associate's degrees right now. That's every one of our CTE programs minus three, correct? That's correct. Well, that's big when you consider what that means as an employer. Uh, they just hired five of the first uh, managerial positions at Continental Tire. One of them is from Warren County. One of our guys went through Heinz from Warren Central that graduated. What they're agreeing to do is finish the rest of his payment for his credentials and then he'll work in the workforce. So when you talk about those partnerships, we have them throughout. I mean, and, and several of you are on those committees and you understand what I'm talking about because we, the end game for us is a J-O-B. We got three exit, four exit strategies. One, you're going to leave us. All of us, we want everybody to graduate. We want them to graduate college, career, and life prepared. I want them to either A, enlist in the armed forces. That's our first E, we'll, we'll accept. The other is we want them employed, gainfully employed with the credential they earned with us. Um, we want them uh, either to work for themselves, which I'm fine with. They can be an entrepreneur. Um, and then I want them enrolled in a post-secondary institution with <coughs> their credentials. Those are our exit strategies. Our academies are remarkable. They've come a long way since the first inception of our conversations. We have an industry council. Uh, we have, uh, how many tactical teams do we have? Eight. Eight tactical teams. And each one of those tactical teams has somebody from the community and somebody from the school district that's attached to it. And we have broadened those. Communication, uh, evidence of, uh, a lot of the uh, articles that you're seeing in the, in the Vicksburg Post. Those are, those are intentional. We're putting that information out there because we want people to know what's going on. Um, your role in this is very important because now the Chamber of Commerce, Pablo is also on our steering committee. Um, our Chamber of Commerce is the um, institute or the first touch for that, that involvement. If you want an intern, you, there's, a, there's a link on the Chamber's website and then it gets us with our academy coaches which gets us directly to our students. Um, we have a vast quantity of students that are learning great things. Our three academies, and I mentioned ACME, is Architecture, Construction, Mechatronics, and Engineering. That's our first academy that's at both of our high schools. We have a Communications, Arts, and Business Academy. And then we have a Health and Human Services Academy. Um, just as recent as this week, we're aligning a um, partnership with Alcorn for a Teachers Academy. I'm putting my money where the mouth is. We're aligning a product where we can get our kids pre-credentialed, guaranteed scholarships, and guaranteed employment. Seamless approach. Same thing I'm doing with Erdick. I want them to be able to hire folks that live in this town, that walk through here, to get their credentials partially with them, finish up at Mississippi State. They want to leave Mississippi State out. We have the only public school, the only public school in the state of Mississippi that offers an intro to chemical engineering course taught by PhDs from Mississippi State. Um, there are students enrolled in it right now. They're over at Heinz in a wonderful lab that Dr. Muse uh, put together for us. Um, that was a brainchild. I told them I didn't want a neat, fun elective that's just cool to have. I want them taking something that every single kid at Mississippi State takes. So if you've got an engineering student in Mississippi State right now that's a freshman is taking the exact same course that our high school students are taking, that's huge because that's one more step towards uh, something you can't get anywhere else outside this community. I'm willing as a superintendent, and I know Heinz is willing as, as, as a, a community college to tailor any kind of workforce needs you have. If there are things in your business, if you need salespeople, if you need uh, workers, Tantec, uh, we went and, and, and toured their facility. We talked about um, getting their calipers instead of taking an algebra course that deals with proportions. Well, you can tan a high, or you can look at a tan height and make proportional statements about that just as well as you can on a sheet of paper. So if you have needs that you need, we're inviting you to be a part all the way down to the curriculum development side. Now that's, that's unique. Um, you're not going to find that very many places. Uh, we needed our students to be ready for um, response in criminal justice. Our city gave us an ambulance. So our kids have the best lab they could possibly have to be able to, 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 to participate in an emergency event. Um, so when you talk about those things, again, we want them graduated, but that's not all we want. We want them to be prepared for college, career, and life. 
And fundamentally, in order for Vicksburg to be viable, we've got to have people working here, uh, taking y'all's jobs, uh, and, and buying homes, and, and getting loans, and uh, paying taxes, right? So then I can turn around and get it from our Board of Supervisors. Is that, is that right? Well, um, any questions? I know I've gobbled up probably more time than Mr. Joe wanted me to. Thank y'all so much. Let's get behind our superintendent, folks. He's got a good attitude. He's a hard worker. He's here for daylight most mornings, and he stays till late at night. Chad Sheely doing a great job for one time. Uh, technical education is not new. We have most awarded technical summer in the state of Mississippi, Warren County is. So I'm extremely proud of that and I've been affiliated with it for right at 50 years. We have the director of the Tallulah Technical School who is our neighbor and our friend. He lives in Vicksburg and works in Tallulah. Uh, Dr. Cox, glad to have you. Let me see who you are. Might have some technical <laughs> folks there. In Tallulah. They are hiring Vicksburg people every day, so we, we always glad to have Mr. Cox. The Warren County Board of Supervisors is an elected position, as you know. They decided recently to fund an additional building for Heinz Community College in Vicksburg. That's a real compliment to Dr. Clyde News. And I want you to know the chairman of that board, and that's Richard George. Richard, would you mind making a couple of statements about the cooperation between the Board of Supervisors and the Community College? Richard George. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the board, it's, it's important that we let you know that our whole goal in Warren County is over the time with the Board of Supervisors and education has been supported. Um, the test scores may bother some, but the goal of education, in our view, these students in this world that we face today go for any job opportunity they don't have, need to have a blank look in their face they need to have been familiarized with a little bit of everything and this community can take pride in the fact that all students are not at the same level they have varying interests varying degrees of ambition the best that you can do for them is the system, aid them, familiarize them with what's out there available to them. Put them in a position to have options. It's hard to force someone to want to do something. If they want to do it, that's the way to go. The creation of an attitude of acceptance and support. And we are proud to have been associated all these years with Dr. Muse, our school system here. That, that bond has been wonderful. And you can take pride that you've done, you're still doing, and we will continue to do all that we can do to provide these students with the setting that they must now take advantage of. It needs to be in their hands as much as it is, more so than ours. They're the ones that have to make the decision for their careers. You pique their interest and give them the opportunity to make a decent, informed decision, and I think they will surprise you. And that's our belief, and we will continue to support and glad to work with everyone and provide industry with the people that you can use that will come to work and perform. Thank you very much. We also have another member of the Board of Supervisors, John Carlisle. John, let them see who you are. John represents my district down on the south end of the county. So Fourth district. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, Tim Crudup is the director of the employment service here in Warren County. <coughs> Tim, what's the unemployment figure for this month? Right now we stand uh, for the United States is 4.1, for Mississippi is 4.7, for Warren County is 5.1. Thank you very much. If we can stay below that five point uh, level, we're really doing some good. That's why you have the Technical Center here in Vicksburg as part of Heinz Community College, to get people ready to go to work. 
you read the newspaper like I did, John Little Ty, which is already training people through Heinz Community College in the district level, uh, will be looking at a couple of thousand people within a few years. Uh, Grand Gulf announced an expansion. They go looking at about 300 new jobs. That's Entergy uh, and nuclear power plant. Uh, I read recently where they're going to build a truck stop out near Bovina at Flowers. Uh, that'll be some new jobs. Across the river with Mr. Cox over there in Tallulah, they're bringing a pipeline through Madison Parish, which is employing welders from Vicksburg. We need that, but with the turnover closing down, we need to move these welders. Uh, also, uh, I've read recently where the Corps of Engineers will have a number of people retiring, so creating new job opportunities. And Colonel Green mentioned at the last meeting that uh, he's looking at about 300 new people moving into the Corps effort. Will that be at early mostly? Just the early Colonel. along, there'll be 300 engineers and scientists and another 300 technicians. Yeah. That. So folks is out there. Somebody wants to work in Warren County, they can get a job. It's just that simple. We have a good chamber of commerce. It's cooperative at all levels. We have the director here this morning, Pablo Diaz. You want to comment on anything, Pablo? They have said everything there was to say. Well, you, see, <laughs> you, see, you see the support that this community provides to job training. Uh, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I would just add that um, that point. I mean, it's a great support from the community, and I just want to state from the Chamber of Commerce point of view that we are fully supportive of the work of the school district and the work of Heinz Community College and that we are uh, proud to play that role uh, as a liaison with industry to actually bring the two together when, when, when we can help so for, for them to cooperate. I mean, I know we have been in front of every major employer in this community in the last few months and we know the issues, we understand the workforce questions they have, the workforce uh, shortcomings that they think we have and, and it's good to have this kind of interaction, constant communication to actually solve those issues. Proud to see uh, the industry here and proud to see Tyson here as well. We have had many conversations uh, about workforce and I thought, I think they, they, they have some good, good people there and they're proud of them and, and I'm, I'm glad to see them here. Thank you very much. Uh, Rick Tellison coordinates education for early. Rick, uh, any comments? Well, likewise, we're great. We're uh, glad to have the opportunity to work with the school district. A really cooperative relationship. We had 200 seventh graders out there yesterday exposing them to um, different jobs that we do, projects that we're working on. So it's an ongoing, ongoing project. Thank you. Uh, our keynote speaker this morning is really no stranger to us. He comes over regularly in Vicksburg and speaks at civic clubs and churches and helps people any way he can. You'll never find a finer gentleman than Dr. Clyde Muse. He grew up over in East Central Mississippi around <laughs> Sebastian Poole, is that right? That's right. That's, that's, the, that's the basketball captain. Nobody in here knows where he is, but <laughs> I know where he is. <laughs> uh, Dr. Clyde Muse was an all-star basketball player, and when you look at his height, you'll understand why. He went to college at Delta State on scholarship uh, finished there with his baccalaureate degree, moved on over to Mississippi State, received his master's degree, and then went on and received his doctorate at Mississippi State. He's been a high school principal, he's been a coach, he's been a teacher, and he's now a community college president. He uh, was superintendent of education in Meridian and Hines County prior to becoming president of Hines Community College. Let's welcome our president, Dr. Clyde Muse. Thank you, Joe. Good to be with you this morning. Somebody said you had to get up early this morning to get over here at 7 o'clock, but you know, I get up early every morning. I uh, learned that when I was a, a student. And I went to um, East Central Community College from Sebastopol. I didn't have any money, but I knew I wanted to go to school, I wanted to be a teacher, I wanted to be a coach. <clears throat> so my principal took me over there to the president and said, now Dr. Todd, this is a good boy, he wants to go to school. 
And Dr. Todd looked at me and said, Son, how much money do you have? <laughs> I said, I don't have any. He said, well, how did you expect to go to school if you didn't have any money? I said, well, I was hoping you'd have a job. It would pay me enough to go to school. He said, I haven't got but one job you can do that. I said, I'll take it. He said, now wait, son, you don't even know what it is. I said, I don't need to know, Dr. Todd, what it is if I can uh, get enough money to go to school. He said, well, it's getting up at 4 o'clock every morning, seven days a week, <clears throat> and milking cows, and milking those cows at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I said, Dr. Todd, that's not a thing new to me. I've been doing that all my life. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have that philosophy. I know there's a lot more opportunities in terms of financial aid and other type of things for students now that we didn't have 60-something <coughs> years ago. Uh, but if you want an education, we'll help you get started and get that education. Either one in which you can go out and get you a good job or one in which you can transfer and get additional education and training. Now you are fortunate here uh, in Vicksburg, Warren County, to have a very creative and innovative school system that's going to pay off great for you in the future. There are a lot of creative and innovative things that are taking place, and we're happy to be a part of that with the school system. I know when I came here, can you believe it, 40 years ago? One of the first people I met was Joe Levi. You had already built that first building, the bank's building. You had already created the first cooperative. In fact, laws had to be changed to make it possible. You had a fellow over here by the name of Rogers, a very bright individual. Mark Cheney was in the legislature at that time. And uh, got this first career and technical education program where you had a cooperative effort. At that time you had two school systems, Warren and Vicksburg, merged and came together. And we've been working with each other for that length of time and continue to do that. And Mr. Sheely told you some things that we're doing now that's quite innovative in terms of uh, some of the new courses that we're teaching, some new opportunities. So uh, we're, we're happy to continue to work very closely with the public school system. We're also happy to work with business and industry and government. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll guarantee you one thing. For businesses come today is not about location. It used to be location, location, location. We own the river, we <coughs> own the highways and so forth. No. no more question is, can you provide me a highly skilled technical workforce that will enable my business to grow and develop and develop. <coughs> we wouldn't have Continental Tire companies if we hadn't been able to convince them that we could do that. Because you know today, 80% of all the jobs that are available out there do not require a baccalaureate degree. Yes, those 20% in the profession, we've got to have those as well. But we must have those that have these newer skills. When, when Continental Tire was looking to come, and they sent their vice president here in charge of that workforce. 
to meet us and talk with us. I heard that one of the main things that they wanted to see whether you had a, uh, you teaching students to make a try. I didn't even know what that was. I was that far behind the curve. <coughs> but I guarantee you I found out what it was. And guess what? When they came to visit us, we had a mechatronics lab set up and everything going, thanks to your dean over here, VP, Marvin Moak, who knew how to do it. And that was one of the things we sold them. When they walked in there, they said, oh, this is what we're doing. And uh, so we're replicating that in a number of spots because of their needs in that area. But things that you and I, and me before most of you in here, went to school. You know, when I first went to Sebastopol, they had two career programs that was agriculture and home economics. <laughs> but I took A. And, uh, but nowadays, those options are just tremendous out there. And one of the things that we had done here was run our room to do this teaching, to provide these pro new programs, these labs, and this new equipment and so forth. So we went to you as a community and we presented you the needs that we have in this community. Got great support for you, uh, from you. We went to our Board of Supervisors and you've already met two of those uh, people today. Uh, great support and leadership by uh, them to say yes. We're willing to levy additional millage so that our community can have that kind of education. And um, so <coughs> we began to try to find a way to finance it with a millage that was uh, led. And um, thanks to uh, Tom Kendall and other <coughs> people, we found a new way of financing called New Market Tax Credits, which was able to save us on the financing of this between three and four million dollars. We've taken that money and we're equipping eight labs and that entire facility with it <coughs> so that we can teach 24-7. You know, we found out we used to think you, if you couldn't take his class at 8 o'clock in the morning, you, you were out of luck. That's no longer true behind it. We're teaching right now 24-7 in a lot of areas. I never did think I'd see a person line up for classes at 12 o'clock midnight. We've got three welding programs going now that's absolutely full for people that come at 12 o'clock and it's going around the clock every day. You know why? Many of those individuals are now working at minimum wage. They can more than double their salary when they get that welding certificate. And people are lined up for, for jobs. So it's, um, it's going to be something that um, uh, is going to be great for this community. Another thing is, um, Mr. Sheila mentioned it briefly, that we're working with him with the what we call early college high school. This got real big uh, a few years ago in North Carolina. And an opportunity for students to take courses uh, while they were still in high school as a part of a career path and get credit for college as well as high school at the same time with a curriculum that's coordinated 
and working. And um, we ran out of space for that. So this new building, thanks to you, the Board of Supervisors, will have, will have additional facilities for what is known as River City High School or the College High School. That will, that will serve, what, Ms. Sheila, 160? Two A. Two, all right, over 200 high school students a year. That will be located in this new building as well. It's going to be a show place just right in front of the current building, the middle building, uh, in that uh, little uh, level place down there. We'll have to build retaining walls around the side. But uh, it is now out for bids. It's been bid. And we've had the groundbreaking. And uh, Marvin, we're supposed to, they're supposed to start doing work doing the dirt work this yes. week. So thanks to you for for the opportunity to expand our program. Particular thanks uh, to our board supervisors and what they have made it possible to do. Now I have enjoyed the years that I've been here. And one of the reasons I have is because of that man standing right back there, Joe Bly. Joe was my dean over here when I came as president in 1978. And we worked together very closely. And I've never seen a person so intent on trying to help that community, Joe Bly. And obviously he was one of the people that I <coughs> called on uh, first to come get me, let's gain the support that we need for this new facility. And he turned to his usual. Your board membership is real strong at Heinz Community College Board of Trustees. Mr. Sheely serves on the finance committee of the board. Donald Oaks, another member, is in a leadership position. So you're in good shape in Vicksburg, Warren County with Heinz Community College. We're also appreciative of the new efforts we have with Urban. And uh, we're beginning to be able to help them some with their workforce development. And uh, we appreciate uh, their support as well. I'm happy to answer a question, Joe, if you've got time. I'm trying we'll to give you back a few minutes. We don't get you over here every day. We'll make time. Any <laughs> questions of the president? Uh, I heard someone say you were looking at putting in a drone training program. Is that accurate? We've got we've got uh, a drone program, one of the first in the state of Mississippi that's tied to Mississippi State's aeronautical engineering program. It's going real well. Uh, we are going to offer some additional classes if a person from Vicksburg uh, cannot get the Raymond. Uh, we're working with the airport uh, here to see if that's possible. Um, the first graduate of that program two years ago went to work with a two-year degree for $117,000 a year. Can you imagine that? Of course, it was in California, so he probably needed that. <laughs> 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 but that is a, going to be a $53 billion industry in the upcoming future. <coughs> Precision in agriculture is a, uh, another one of those things. Helping law enforcement, another. All kind of efforts. Uh, the early in their efforts, the drones are going to pay up a larger role and we're going to be working with them. So it's going to be a, another plus for us. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> I want you to see the man that kind of looks like me that you're going to be calling on in the future.
You've been worrying me for 43 years. Now you're going to worry this man. Do we look alike? <laughs> it's part of the job we do. Yeah. Bobby Moe, Vice President of Pittsburgh and Warren County. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Uh, funny story, when I first came over to Vicksburg, we were standing in a line and everybody was coming up shaking my hand and Mr. Joe came through and he grabbed my hand and said, come on boy, we've got to hurry up, we've got to be down at the chamber meeting in, 40, in 15 minutes. And I jumped in the car and been following him ever since. <laughs> uh, well, a good file of attention. I have to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to keep it brief. We have been extremely busy on uh, Vicksburg campus the, the last few years. Um, and I'm, ha I'm very happy to report, as Mr. Sheely mentioned a while ago, uh, enrollment is up at the Career Center. Uh, it's been up for the second or third straight year in a row. Um, we are now pushing off right at 600 students um, through the uh, Vicksburg Warren uh, High School and College Career Center. That is, and all of those students, thanks to collaboration with Dr. Muse and Mr. Sheely, are now uh, receiving some type of dual credit opportunities. And what does that mean? That means these students are able to graduate from high school with uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 hours in a, uh, a career technical field. We've gone to the to MBE and got uh, new numbers for them. So these students have great opportunity. Um, this year, or this, uh, this fall, I'm happy to report that uh, right now over 400 of those students have signed up and, and have a dual credit opportunity. So the, that is a great, great bit, uh, opportunity and effort for the, uh, the, the folks here in Warren County. Now, we've also expanded our uh, career technical offerings in uh, uh, the evening time. So we're, we're one of those course campuses that are doing the midnight courses. And we find that a lot of business and industries are running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you've got a person who's working on a, a second shift, they can't come to class at, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. And one of the things Dr. Muse taught me a long, long time ago was flexibility. He told me, he said, Marvin, if you turn somebody away, they ain't coming back. And I don't believe in turning folks away. So as long as Dr. Muse will allow me, I'll, I'll run classes. Day, night, weekend, holiday, doesn't matter to me. Um, we also started uh, in July the very first River Barge training program in the state of Mississippi on Hines campus. Uh, we're very proud of that. So far, we've trained over 60 uh, deckhand and River Barge uh, uh, trainees. Um, that class is a, a seven-day course. They, uh, they've learned everything from throwing lines to galley training. Um, and it's in a collaboration with uh, the three barge companies here in uh, Vicksburg. Um, we have also worked very closely with Mr. Sheely and uh, Dr. Muse on the River City Early College. I think it's 120, 130 students. Two classes. Right? Two classes right now. We have a ninth grade and a tenth grade going in there, looking at eleventh and uh, starting eleventh grade next year. That has been a joy to have on campus. Uh, thanks to uh, Lots of uh, remodeling and lots of uh, space use. We are we have maxed out. I think we are about 95 percent uh, space use on the Vicksburg campus. And whenever I got there, there was a lot of dark rooms and a lot of things that wasn't being utilized. And Dr. Muse allowed us to remodel a lot of facility and uh, expand, and we're real proud of that. Um, the campus has been growing as far as uh, enrollment. Um, we are now. Uh, at the moment, the third largest of the campuses. Um, so we're real pleased with that. Dr. Muse has been extremely supportive. Uh, Mr. Sheely and, and I visit all the time. Mr. Rossett and I work real closely together with the uh, Career Technical Center. Um, so we're real proud of all those things. Workforce development has really grown on the campus. Uh, a lot of business and industries are now coming and saying, we'd like uh, training in Word. We'd like training in uh, PLCs or programmable logic controllers. We'd like training in motor controls. We'd like forklift training. Uh, we're doing all those things and anything else that, that you uh, could need. So my plea is 
if there's an area that your employees need training in, if there's something that we can do to assist this community, give me a call. I, I love to write curriculum. I love to come up with an, uh, a plan to assist folks. And um, Dr. Muse has always been extremely supportive in that. And we want to see our workforce grow. And we want to see uh, uh, for us to have one of the most uh, competitive and uh, technically skilled workforces in the state of Mississippi. And we want to see that grow and continue. And I also want to thank the Board of Supervisors for this new state-of-the-art building that we're going to put on campus, which will allow us that, uh, that ability to continue to train 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Uh, just a little bit about his background. He's a Class A electrician. He has a bachelor's degree from the University of Southern Mississippi and a master's degree from Jackson State University. So very capable people in these jobs, folks. You're getting the best into Warren County to do this work for you. And you're going to have a good workforce, I promise you. With the help of Tim Crudup placing them uh, and the, all these new hundreds of jobs coming into this town, we're going to continue an upward mode. Uh, we have our mayor with us this morning, and we are privileged, if he'd like to say a few words, Mayor Flagg. He's a good morning. High, <laughs> high Community College graduate and Jackson State graduate. So good morning. Keep it at home. <laughs> Richard Joyce, Hines Community College graduate and Mississippi State University graduate. Joel Advisor, Hines, Mississippi State. So Hines plays a key role in, in our lives, and Dr. Muse, we wanted to continue to be in first place in this nation, not just in this state, folks. Did you know that the state of Pennsylvania copied the community college system of Mississippi? Have you ever heard that before? Did you realize that the state of California has many programs that copies Mississippi? We talk about Mississippi being behind on things. Folks, Mississippi's not behind. It's just a matter of resources, and we have to reach and grab everywhere we can. We have a state representative with us this morning. I'm going to let him tell us where the next dollar is coming from. <laughs> Oscar Denton is uh, representing this district in the legislature. Oscar, would you like to tell us if, we, if we're if we going to be funded this year or not? You're not going to be funded. <laughs> <laughs> you got a profit on this. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as you all know, that funds are tightening in, in this great state of Mississippi. Now, but I will tell you this. I was sitting there thinking about my connection with uh, Heinz Community College. Uh, I started my career off at Utica Junior College. I, I attended Utica Junior College. I left there and went to the phone company where I stayed 39 years, 10 months, 10 days, 15 <laughs> hours and 12 seconds. <laughs> but when I started there, we had, it was old fashioned, you know, party lines and everything. You had to call the ladies in Jackson to get your jobs. And someone say, man, they finna get computers. We're gonna have computers in the truck. I say, no, nah, we're not gonna have computers in the truck. Yeah, we're gonna have computers in the truck. So, I was a union president for our local union. So I got a group of guys I think it was about 20 of us, contacted Heinz out there to teach us how to operate a computer. And I can remember this lady, she was, uh, she worked for up on the harbor. She was teaching the class. First day in class, she said, well, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I said, man, we're not going to do that. She said, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. I said, man, you're not understanding me. I said, you see this group of guys right here? We don't even know what a computer look like. We don't even know what a computer button is to turn it on. She said, Mr. Den, you just kidding me. I said, ask one of them to turn the computer on. She did. He couldn't. I said, so you're going to have to start at the basics with us. So she did. Started at the basics with us. Now, when we left there, we were doing graphics. We were doing all kinds of stuff on the computer. So Heinz really played a part 
in my development through the phone company because as everyone has said here, everything changes. Everything changes from going from a big old phone to a phone like this. So everything changes. And y'all know, one thing stays the same in the state of Mississippi. We don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you this, and I, I know that Mr. Sheila knows, Dr. Muse knows, and some other folks know in this room, that we would do everything possible to get you all the dollars that you need to help follow Vicksburg and Warren County. And I, all you gotta do, the mayor has called me, Dr. Sheely called me, and they'll tell you, Dr. Muse, they'll tell you, you call me and ask me to do something for you, and for this city, and for this county, I'm gonna do everything in my power to get that done. That's all I ask y'all to do. If you need me to help you in any shape, form, or fashion, just give me a call. Thank you. Representative Denton and Senator Briggs Hobson have been just wonderful friends to the school district. Uh, they are so easy to work with, and we certainly appreciate what oh, you do for one us. one other thing now. Since Monsoor is with the city, I'm the senior representative now. <laughs> <laughs> that means you provide more money. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Uh, we'll entertain any comments. We've got about five minutes. Uh, anyone not getting what they want from the school system? We've got a new county agent in town. Stand up, Miss Howden, and let them see you. She's mighty pretty. We had an old ugly boy down there for years, and now we got a young lady from Mississippi State University. Well, the first thing I want y'all to know is that I'm a breast cancer survivor. Oh, good. Uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in June, and so I'm fighting. And um, I started working here in April, and I just want everybody in this room to know that the people in this county and the community have been so sweet and kind to me. Um, Mr. George, Mr. Carlisle have just been so kind to me and uh, helping me with whatever I needed or asked. Um, I just am glad to be here. Um, I'm very impressed with this information. Um, I'm already working with a group of kids over at the Academy of Innovation. In fact, I'm going to meet with them today about starting a garden club. So um, I'm very happy to be here and if I can help any of you with anything from Mississippi State, please give me a call um, because I want to further our mission of extending knowledge and changing lives. So just let me know. Good, thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Mills from the state of Mississippi. And yeah. she works for the bank there, Ms. Mason. You probably did. Yes. Your father's your mother. Well, that's how she ended up in Vicksburg. <laughs> Clark? Grew up and learned it and went to school up at Hines with me years ago. Any comments from coming out of the rural Mississippi roots that you have? No, I'm impressed <laughs> with the progress that has been made since you and I were at Hines. Yeah, that's right. Hines is boom many ball. years ago. <coughs> we're really blessed. We're really blessed. Our national park is booming. Soon as we can get the road fixed out there, we're going to wash out. How are we doing on that, Kurt? Making progress. Oh, um, some surveys were done the last couple of uh, weeks. So. We're so blessed to have the National Park here. Yeah, it brings hundreds and thousands <coughs> of people to Vicksburg who spend money here, of course, and that's what it's all about. We're glad to have Tyson on board, Ed Fletcher and his folks. You're welcome. We meet in April and October. Hope you'll come back. Okay. Tom, what you got going down there south of town? Well, we're just working on our customers and trying to stay innovative and make sure that we're meeting their needs, the ever-changing needs of the customers, so we have to make sure we align with the customers. So that's what we keep working on. Thank you. Yeah. Tim, any new job announcements coming up in the near future? Not really, but what I do want to say is that we do have internships that if employees are looking for some people, we have on-the-job training, we have internships, if you're looking to hire someone, 
you want to work with that person for a period, we can go up to 480 hours. This is paid. We paid for this. Um, we are partnering with uh, Hands. With we have a person on board in our office now for any training, truck driving school, nursing school, those schools, all that. And this is training that is paid for by the employment service. So if you have people in need of training, you want people that qualify for work, call us, let us know, and we can be of service to you. Thank you, Tim. Now, are you screening anyone for any of these new jobs that the newspaper keeps talking about? <coughs> Do you have any list going for Continental Tire or Grand Gulf or Not at present. Golden Barge Lines? And I think they had 200 is what Steve told me. Um, not at present. Okay. But they can screen through your office. Yes, so you yes. In order to get a list of Yes. Uh, yes, sir. I didn't mention this, but uh, in, in lines with Tim, what you'll find, I apologize, what you'll find here, and get a better uh, description of what it is, it's called e Education to Employment. Um, a lot of times some of your employees don't have clean pasts. They have uh, things they've got to clean up, credentials they got to get, they didn't quite graduate, whatever. Um, we, uh, our, our board is incredibly outside the box with some of their approaches, and we've taken the stance that um, K-12 education isn't all we're about. We actually have a program called E2E. Uh, it's a grant that we applied for. Uh, the initial swing, we, we submitted, I don't know, a couple million dollar grant. The guy looked at it and said we swung too low, so we went back in and uh, presented about a 12. Uh, the first in installment is $878,000 uh, through a partnership with the uh, Department of Human Services. Now, we take that money to train the parents of our students in poverty. Because what you'll, uh, we, we found a, a hook to be able to get to that, so at night we have courses uh, the same 16th cluster job expiration. Uh, they do a financial freedom component. They do internships, externships. If they're needing to finish off a bachelor's, we go all corn. If they need credentials, we send them through Heinz. Um, so, so that is a, if, if you've got people that you know that you want, but there's just some something there that they can't get where they need to go to get the credentials, send them to Lucy DeRosset and we can line them up in that E to E at night. It's a 15 week program. And we got about 30 adults uh, that are being served. Uh, because if we improve the home, then inversely, uh, or, or transversely, we improve the performance of the child at, at school. So, anyway, I wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, promised uh, you 8 o'clock, folks. That's what it is, but let's give one or two more comments. One, one more comment, since we're talking about uh, some of the jobs here. Uh, Armstrong, as you all know, um, they, they, they are closing the facility, but we have had many employers in the community and that have come and interviewed people there at their facilities and, and Armstrong has been extremely flexible in allowing their employees to do interviews on the job and we actually have a new employer that called yesterday the office, my office and, and we're setting up for them to do so. If anybody, any other industries are going to be hiring or need people right now, give me a call and we can set that up for you all to talk to people that are already employed, have been employed for a long time. Thank you very much. No, Ed, how many folks y'all have the task? Uh, about 500 people. 500. So if you need a few workers, call Heinz. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Uh, Any additional comments? I want to recognize the chairman of the Votech Advisory Council, Charlie Peach. Mm -hmm. Charlie was former high school principal of Vicksburg High and administrative assistant to the superintendent of education. He's been working with Votech for over 40 years. Does a great job. We appreciate your service, Charles. Any comments? Thank you for coming. See you in April if I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs>